In today's video, I am asking the question, does fiber really cancel out the carbs? Does it negate any possible increase in blood sugar from the carbs? So today we are putting up a quest bar against the Keto Mojo. So there's a lot of debate in the keto world, net carbs versus total carbs. And of course, if you're new to keto, the idea of net carb is great because that means you can eat more foods as long as it has plenty of fiber, then you're negating those carbs and all is good. However, I'm nearing my two year ketoversary and the more I learn about keto, the more I'm starting to lean towards total carbs. So, but today I really wanted to put it to the test. I don't want to just assume because one side says this or one side says that, that is true when I can actually run the test myself with my Keto Mojo. So I went ahead and ran a baseline test today and I'll show you those numbers real quick. So my glucose levels, if you can see it, were 88 and my ketone levels this morning were 0.9. So starting out really good with the numbers this morning, I'm in a fasted state. I haven't had anything but water since last night. So I'm going to again, eat a quest bar and these are, is that upside down? That's upside down. These are my guilty pleasure. I love quest bars. I typically don't keep them in the house because I have no self-control, but I do eat them when I'm on a road trip or I'm on vacation. Now, before I eat it, I did want to talk a little bit about the ingredients and this particular, this particular quest bar and it's the double chocolate chunk is fabulous. It, um, it advertises for net carbs. Well, if you're doing 20 net carbs, I mean, that's a small, I mean, it's, you know, not a small portion of those net carbs, but it still leaves you plenty throughout the day. Um, but the total numbers on this read, we have 180 calories, but we're not worried about that right now. There's seven grams of fat, the total carbs, and this is where it kind of worries me. The total carbs is 24 grams. So if I'm counting total carbs and I'm trying to stay under 20, I can't even eat one of these in a day and stay under my limit. But if you're net carbs, we have 24 carbs and we have 14 grams of fiber, fiber that knocks it down automatically to 10 carbs. Then you take out the six grams of erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that you subtract and you get to come all the way down to four net carbs for this bar. Again, sounds great, but we're gonna run the test to make sure that's true. The other thing I wanted to notice or to note on this bar is because it is advertised um, in the keto world as keto friendly, um, the ingredients include, there is a, a protein blend, which is a milk protein, I'm fine with that. But the second ingredient is corn, uh, soluble corn fiber. As soon as I see corn, my first thought is that's not really keto friendly to a pure keto diet that is grain free. Um, and then the ingredients go on to include almonds and water, erythritol, which of course is what it's sweetened with, um, cocoa because it's chocolate. Um, there's natural flavors. You got to be curious here because we, no one actually knows what's in the natural flavors and it will vary from one, one product to the next. Um, cocoa butter, and then less than 2% of sea salt, sunflower lechin. Do we even know what lechin is? I'm not sure. And then uh, steviol, or basically stevia. The good thing about this bar, and one thing I do like about this particular flavor of the Quest bar, is there's no soy in it. And if you struggle with estrogen dominance, you really should stay away from soy. So at the very, and I am, I've been trying to limit my soy. So at the very least, it doesn't include soy, but Let's see how it affects the sugar levels. I will be testing, so we already have the baseline. I'm gonna be testing at 30 minutes, 60 minutes, an hour and a half, and two hours. My expectation is we will see a bit of a spike that first 30 minutes to an hour, and then it should start coming down. But how much of a spike, and will it come back all the way down within that two hour mark? Okay, it's been 30 minutes, and I just pricked my finger again. So this is the first time I run tests just to see how net carbs compare to truly total carbs. So I have no idea what to expect for these next, for the next hour and a half. But for today, or for this first test, it's been 30 minutes. My glucose levels are still at 80, can you see that? There it goes, 87. Um, I was actually surprised to see it stay that low. And then my ketone levels are hanging tight at 0.8. Where is it at? There it is, 0.8. So, so far, the Quest Bar has had zero effect on my ketones 
and my sugar level. Again, they are both within either one point for the glucose or a tenth of a point for the ketones. Um, that's actually very encouraging. So I'm gonna go um, take another 30 minute break and then we'll be back to check, to see how, what it looks like after an hour. Okay, we are one hour since we ate the Quest Bar. I'm not sure why I'm saying we, it is only me. So what does the one hour mark show? For the glucose test, man, it is hanging steady in the high 80s. Again, I'm actually really surprised about that. Um, and then the ketones, these did take a dip, 0 0.4. Now that could be explained by a lot of things. Maybe for whatever reason, my body decided to just burn some extra ketones in these last 30 minutes. Um, you know, it's still, it's, you know, four tenths of a point is below the 0.5, um, you know, the, the level you want to be at, you want to be above 0.5 on your ketones. This is gonna fluctuate some throughout the day depending on your activity, if you're working out. Again, you know, depending on what your body is burning at that moment. Um, so I'm not too concerned about it. I'm really though, I'm honestly surprised about the glucose readings. I expected there to be a spike on the glucose readings and there hasn't been. So the question I guess is, because of all the fiber, is it just absorbing much slower? Um, than it would otherwise, or is the fiber actually negating the carbs like they advertise? So I don't know, I look forward, I'm gonna test again in another 30 minutes, which will be an hour and a half after eating the Quest Bar, and we'll see what those tests show up. Okay, we're an hour and a half in, I just pricked my finger. Once again, I do love these tests, I do not enjoy pricking my finger so often in a given day. If you're a diabetic, my thoughts are with you for having to prick your fingers or other parts of your body so often. So here are the test results. So the glucose is 91, the, the backlight went off. It is 91 for the hour and a half mark. So it went up a couple of points from what, 87 to 91? Not much. And then my ketones have come, they're, they're holding steady at 0.4 right now. So those haven't come back up yet. So right now the, the the fiber is still working. It is still keeping the um, it is still negating the carbs. My blood sugar is not going up. Again, it is still under a hundred after I've eaten. So I mean, you're fasting glucose. You want to shoot shoot for under a hundred. And at this point, I'm no longer fasted fasted, and I'm still sticking under 100 for my glucose readings. So right now, the Quest Bar is doing surprisingly well. Um, I'm not going to feel, at these current results, I'm not going to feel near as guilty eating them when I'm on the road. Um, so we have one more test to run though, and that's going to be at the two hour mark, and that is going to conclude this test for the Quest Bar. And uh, we'll see how that goes, but at this point, my level should be pretty much leveling out at the two hour mark after I have eaten. So it's just, I'm really only doing it just to hold to the, the two hour testing like I like to do, and we'll see what that says. The final test was at the two hour mark, so let's see how my numbers did here. My glucose levels actually went even further down. They're only sitting at 80 right now. That's a, a rare number for me. Usually I have a hard time getting below 85, and then my ketone levels, they actually went down another tenth of a point to 0.3, and I don't usually see my ketone levels that low either. I'm rarely below 0.5 and I'm usually closer to the full um, one point mark versus just being lower than one. So what is this telling us? I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was very surprised that my glucose not only stayed the same, I mean outside it went up like four points, um, but compared to when I tested a banana on my Yakon syrup test video, um, that one, my, my glucose dropped like 50 points. So obviously the Quest Bar is not gonna have a huge impact on your blood sugar levels. And of course, if you don't have a lot of blood sugar hitting, you don't have a lot of insulin flooding your system either. So I personally think that a Quest Bar, especially if you're diabetic, is definitely a safe snack. Now, does this mean they should be a staple in your diet and you should eat them every day? Probably not. There's still a lot of ingredients, more ingredients than you really want to eat on an ongoing basis. Um, especially because it does have that soluble corn fiber, which I still I need to read up on that to see um, exactly how that affects just your overall health. 
But here's one other thing I did notice is that after two hours, I was starving. Um, and then of course, this is not meant to be a meal replacement bar. It is just supposed to be a snack. But compared to if I would have had like eggs and bacon for breakfast or even made some keto pancakes, I would have stayed fuller a lot longer having a true breakfast rather than just having a Quest bar. Um, so for me personally, I'm still just gonna allow it to be a road trip treat, not a staple in the house. However, these test results do give me um, confidence and make me feel better about how those one-off treats are affecting my body. Um, if you haven't already seen it yet, make sure and click over to my video where I tested Yakon syrup, which I made, uh, which is used in things like gingerbread because it's a molasses um, substitute, and to see how that affected my blood sugar. I already gave you a, a teaser telling you about the banana results because I wanted to test the results of the low carb sweetener versus one of nature's sugars in a banana. Um, and the results were very interesting. And then there's also a link to uh, gingerbread cookies that are shaped like Baby Yoda. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Again, I'm starving. I'm going to go make me a steak now. You guys have a good day. Bye.